reverse cun megaphone silencer. Now, I've done a bit of research on this, and I'm not quite sure when it happened, nor am I sure who actually originally designed it. But one thing I am sure of is that in the 1960s, the megaphone silencer took the motorcycle racing circuits by storm. Its design encouraged engines to produce more power and more torque and the first to use it in races had a distinct advantage over everyone else. To the point where if you didn't have a set of these silencers fitted to your race bike, you quite simply weren't in the running. Now this was the golden age of British motorcycling, the time of the cafe racer and the ton up boys. And it wasn't long before this design of silencer found its way onto Joe Public's bike. A design that was to become a motorcycling icon, something that endured even into the 1980s. Now I don't think for a minute that this design ever really disappeared. There was always someone making it somewhere, albeit for a niche market. But now is the time of the modern classic motorcycle, what's become known as the new wave custom era. And once again British customs have come to the forefront with their short version of that iconic design. A product which has in itself become legendary. The Predator Pro Shorty Silencer. Now this silencer shares exactly the same DNA as the standard Predator Pro. The same all-in-one piece stainless steel construction that contains no external welds, boasting a flawless mirror finish. And the same high velocity output baffle system that allows exhaust gases to escape quickly, allowing the engine to develop more horsepower and more torque. Now to be perfectly honest, I was quite happy with the Sleeper Pro silencers that I fitted to the bike some time ago. But since that time I have had a lot of requests for the Predator Pro silencers. Now fitting these silencers to a T120 or any of the other bikes that it's compatible with is a piece of cake. And once you know what you're doing, it's literally just 10 minutes work. Now the fitting is more or less the same as with the Sleeper Pros, so I'm not going to go into it in intricate detail. If you do want a more detailed fitting guide, please click on the link above and that will take you to the Sleeper Pro video. This might also be helpful for people that are changing from the standard Triumph silencers, as removal is very slightly different from removing the Sleeper Pros. Now you are going to need a set of graphite exhaust seals. These don't come with any of the British Customs kits but you can buy them separately either from British Customs or from your local Triumph dealer. I have heard of people fitting these silencers without the graphite seals. I had a look to see if there was a way to do this and to be quite honest I can't imagine how those people have managed it and obtained a decent fit. I just don't see how it can be done. Now I did film the fitting of the graphite seals but it was one of those occasions where I pressed the record button thinking that it would start recording but I was already recording and what it actually did was it put the camera onto standby. Unfortunately once these seals are fitted you cannot get them out intact so I couldn't repeat the process on camera. But they are just a simple push fit as far as you can into your silencer prior to fitting. Now this exhaust kit comes with everything that you need for fitting apart from those graphite exhaust seals. It comes with two ice elastic mounting systems with spacers and a replacement set of exhaust clamps. It also comes with a spare bump stop in case you don't want to fit the one that came with your original Triumph silencer and an additional piece of angled steel with a bump stop on it. Now that had no application with the T120 I'm presuming 
that that is designed to fit some other model of bike. Now the first thing that you need to do starting on your right hand silencer which is the easiest one to do is using an allen key loosen off the exhaust clamp. Make sure that it is good and loose because when you start moving the silencer later on you might reach a tight spot with it so make sure that you unfasten it properly. Once you've done that you need to remove your rear right hand foot peg. To do this just get a spanner on the nut at the back of the foot peg press down hard on the foot peg while it's unfolded and unfasten the nut. Once you've done that you can remove the foot peg and the bolt that holds it in place which also holds the silencer on and while you're doing this support the existing silencer otherwise it will just drop as the bolt comes out. Once you've removed that bolt with a slight twisting motion you don't have an awful lot of space here but with a slight twisting motion withdraw your silencer. Then taking your new right hand Predator Pro Shorty, attach one of the new exhaust clamps in your kit onto the silencer end. Now it's a good idea here to fit your ice elastic mounting system onto the bracket of your new exhaust silencer. It's composed of a spacer, a grommet and then a spacer with an insert that goes through the grommet. Put the thicker spacer to one side and then withdraw the other flanged spacer from the grommet. Fit the grommet onto the Predator Pro exhaust bracket and once you've got it in place properly reinsert the flanged spacer onto the back of the bracket that's on the chain side and then gently slide your silencer onto the exhaust pipe of the bike. Again a slight twisting motion helps here and line up the hole in the silencer bracket with the hole for your foot peg. Partially insert the foot peg with bolt through the frame of your bike and as you're doing so thread the bolt through the thicker of the two spacers and then through the silencer bracket and then start to fasten it up with the bolt on the back. Check the alignment of your silencer as you go along and tighten the foot peg bolt up. There should be no need to disassemble the rear foot peg if you put a firm downward pressure on it that should create enough friction to stop the bolt from actually turning. Fastening it up nice and tight then when you've done that you can position your exhaust clamp how you want it and tighten that up and that's your right hand side done. Now the procedure for the left hand silencer is pretty much the same. There's just one or two things to watch out for. First of all, if you're removing the original Triumph silencers, there is one additional bolt holding this side on. And that bolt's there for two reasons. One is to take the force from your main stand when it's folded up in order for the bike to be ridden. And the other is that your outlet pipe from your catalytic converter or your cross pipe doesn't have any support. It relies on the silencer to keep it in place. Now with both your Sleeper Pros and your Predator silencers they're much shorter and much lighter than the original silencers so this fastening point isn't required. In a nutshell if you're removing the existing Triumph silencer obviously you will need to remove this bolt but you don't need to replace it when you're fitting the British Custom silencers. Now on the underside of your left hand Predator Pro Shorty there is a little bracket with a hole in it designed to accept your rubber bump stop for your centre stand. You can either use the spare one that's provided with the British Customs kit or you can, like I did, just remove the bump stop from your old silencer and place that onto your new silencer. One last thing to look out for here is your centre stand when it's folded up out of the way. You may need to manipulate the new silencer very slightly and get it into position to make sure that the centre stand doesn't foul on it when the centre stand is folded up. It should only touch the rubber bump stop, it shouldn't touch the silencer itself. So make sure that you've got this lined up properly before tightening up either your exhaust clamp or your main bolt via your rear foot peg. Now that should see your installation complete. Fit and finish is perfect, I couldn't fault it anywhere, there was no problems in fitting this exhaust system whatsoever. 
The unique short upswept design of these silencers provides a distinct advantage in that it leaves the area required for chain maintenance completely free and unencumbered. This means that you don't have to remove silencers in order to adjust your chain. It amazes me how just changing silencers can completely alter the visual character of the bike. To my eye personally it gives the whole bike a more competitive look, a meaner stance. Something that pea shooters don't provide. And then there's performance. Now the ECU on the modern watercooled twins is self-learning. There's no need to remap these bikes when you make a modification like this. But there is a procedure that you need to go through to acclimatise the ECU to the new setup. And this is where I noticed the first major difference in the way this bike runs. Now the procedure is to start the engine up and let it idle through one heat cycle. That is, let it run until the cooling fan kicks in and then when it's finished, switch the engine off. Normally this takes between 7 and 9 minutes from cold. On this occasion it took over 14 minutes. Now it's always been a common feature of these bikes that they do run very hot and that the cooling fan is constantly kicking in. And those that own one will know that even in cooler temperatures, 30 seconds at a junction or a traffic light at a standstill and your cooling fan will burst into life. That stopped, it's simply not happening anymore, to the point where at one point I actually thought my cooling fan was broken, but it's not. It only kicks in when it needs to and it's obvious that the HVO system or high velocity output that British Customs have incorporated into these pipes in conjunction with the shorter pipe is venting heat from the engine much more quickly than has previously occurred which can only be a good thing with these bikes but please bear in mind I am running a cross pipe and I also have a booster plug fitted to this bike. Now I was always pleased with the Sleeper Pro silencers and the power gains that they provided, although in real terms they were only moderate. But it's obvious that British Customs have tuned these pipes more towards the performance market. Like the Bonneville, they may look like a throwback from the 60s, but it's obvious that there's something very 21st century going on inside. There is a little bit more power, there's no doubt about that. The bike feels more responsive and acceleration feels slightly stronger, but torque does seem to have significantly increased. In its stock configuration, the Bonneville will only pull 30 miles an hour in a maximum third gear. Anything above that and it simply doesn't want to know. As I reported with the Sleeper Pros, with the cross pipe configuration that I have, this was raised, more torque was available, lowering the rev range. And it was possible not only to maintain 30 miles an hour in fourth gear, but if you were gentle, you could even accelerate away from that point. The Predator Pro Shorty has raised that bar yet again. In fourth gear at 30 miles an hour, the bike will accelerate without complaint. And not only that, it will now quite happily hold 30 miles an hour in fifth gear, something this bike simply refused to do in the past. Now, last but certainly not least, sound. I'm not sure why, but I expected these pipes to be hooliganistic, they're not. Don't get me wrong, they are naughty, but in the same vein, they're also very nice. Now in its stock configuration without British Customs quiet core system fitted, I describe the exhaust note as crisp and primal. Under load, the exhaust note rewards you with a low guttural note. It sounds angry and at gear changes it snaps and snarls like an angry snappy snarly thing. The pipes are more audible to the rider because the short pipes, but to me they didn't sound any louder than the sleeper pros. 
The sound it provides you with is immensely satisfying, but when I put a decibel meter on this, to my surprise, it actually gave a reading a handful of decibels lower than the Sleeper Pros, which leads me to suspect that my decibel meter does need recalibrating. Now, to that end, I intend producing another video on Wednesday, just a short one, to try and show an accurate test, both without the Quiet Core system and with the quiet core system for people that live in countries that are more sound sensitive. British Customs did provide me with a quiet core system and really I think that deserves a video all of its own. I will of course leave a link to the British Customs website in the video description down below. Now camera audio doesn't really give an accurate rendition of how these sorts of things sound but this video simply wouldn't be complete without it. Once again, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. As I've said, I'll be back on Wednesday. So until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.